So here's something you don't normally see at my shop. It's a Ferrari 355 Spider. Uh, it's actually an interesting color combination. It is green, British racing green with a uh, tan interior. Uh, this car is uh, belongs to a customer of mine and he's asked me to help uh, put it on bring a trailer. <clears throat> this car is actually, you know, people are, are starting to come onto their radar as far as like a, you know, a desirable car that they want. And one of the main reasons why it has a gated shifter. Uh, these things are really becoming popular because uh, people are starting to recognize that, you know, they're not making gated shifters anymore. Uh, sometimes driving them, I think, is just fun. I mean, I've grown up on manuals, so it's just uh, something that, you know, sports cars are manuals. But at the same time, um, with the advent of Formula One transmissions, people have uh, stopped ordering their cars with with, with manual transmissions. So these uh, the manuals are starting to become fairly rare. 355s were the first generation of cars that had uh, the F1 transmission, which is the uh, manual transmission with the uh, electro uh, hydraulic type shifter so it was still a manual transmission but it it uh, it shifted the transmission with uh, with uh, switches and 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 uh, actuators and um, they these cars were still sold as manuals but uh, it was the first generation 355 was the first Ferrari street driven Ferrari that came with a Formula One transmission and uh, what's happened is through the years these transmissions have gotten better and people have uh, started to use them exclusively. In fact, Ferrari no longer makes cars with manual transmissions. They all come with uh, Formula One transmissions. So I think with the rarity of that, and people are starting to realize that, you know, they really like uh, manuals uh, and, and they're becoming kind of a collector's item. So this car is probably um, a good place to sell uh, publicly for uh, for a uh, 355 that has a a manual transmission. A couple other things that's that's neat about this car is that it's green. It's British racing green um, with a tan interior, which is I think a pretty neat, pretty good color combination. It's pretty handsome. I and mean, a lot of times we see these cars, and they're you know everybody buys a red Ferrari. Well, it's nice to have kind of a a green a green Ferrari, which which I think is pretty nice. Uh, dark colors really really uh, lend itself to this car. The other interesting thing on this car is the first owner was Tommy Hilfiger. Uh, it's only a three owner car including the, the seller that uh, owns this car, my client, but only three owners and the first owner being Tommy Hilfiger. In fact the owner has reached out to uh, Mr. Hilfiger and, and, and has a letter from him stating that he yes he did own this car. I think there's even a picture of, of uh, you know, he'll figure next to this car. So it's kind of neat, you know, a little, little neat thing to it. Um, is it, is it worth more because of the celebrity ownership? You know, it's up to the, up to the public to decide. And I think that's why we feel that the best way or the best uh, venue to put this car out there is, um, is bring a trailer. Um, what I've done for this car or had done because I didn't do it was I sent the uh, car out for a major service. Um, you know, major service is important on this car. This is a belt, a uh, timing belt car. So there's a service interval that requires a, a timing belt be done on a regular basis. Uh, so it, it, was, um, it was recently done at Pocono Sports Cars. Uh, and the other thing that we did was we put uh, new tires on it because uh, the, the car needed brand new tires on it. And the other selling point to this car, it is a 15,000 mile car. So it's pretty low in mileage. I mean, just a nice original car without much, you know, use to it. There are some little things here that I'm going to address, which is just a couple usual, you know, scuffs from the from the door handle. I've actually done some work here on the on the sticky gauges because you know these cars also suffer from sticky panels. Um, and uh, I spoke to the owner and you know we've been working on stuff to make this car better I mean it's not uh, ready to sell just yet um, one of the biggest things I want to do for this car is to get a full detail um, 
it's a little dusty it's it's uh you know it's with such low mileage this car has spent more time probably under a cover than driven and um <clears throat> it needs to be it needs to be compounded it needs a real good um paint issues are just uh you know it's original paint but there's just like little micro scratches because unfortunately what happens is these cars they people put covers on them they, they they get dusty they get wiped off and then you get tiny little scratches this i don't know if it's going to show up in video but um it it's a clean car but yet it's it's got its own little you know issues not bad but i believe that this car is just going to be unbelievable once we we have it uh once we have it detailed i'm i'm going to uh have a you know a professional detailer come and uh we'll cover that in this video as far as the work some of this what i'm doing is just to cover some of the things that i'm going to do to this car to try to get it ready for for sale you know for two things one is obviously we want the the owner of this car to do well with this car so i'm trying to advise them as what we should do how we should do it and then um what we should fix on the car and what i've been doing is just making sure that everything um i do on the car is is done well i mean we uh you know handles and things like that that uh that i've ordered and and repaired just to say hey listen you know if i if, I, if this if somebody buys this car they want to make sure that everything works want to make sure that the top works make sure that nothing's broken um i've replaced what i can replace um we, we um we have to do a little bit of cleaning interior cleaning um so that's that's the plan is to is to work on this car a little bit get it cleaned up and then i guess i'm going to babysit the bring a trailer um the bring a trailer um ad it's um you know it's just trying to be receptive to anybody who wants to buy the car and maybe even people who don't want to buy the car but just want to talk about the car so um i will uh i will be uh doing that as well so uh hoping that uh you know people get to see this car and and appreciate for what it is and um uh, see what happens and and this will go to a good home i think it's it i've driven the car it feels good um you know these are fun little cars to drive they're 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 uh and and um i think it's gonna you know go to a good home hopefully and um everybody be happy but uh this is uh this is the start of it i'm gonna go through some of the things that that uh, still need to be done before we uh we put this on bring a trailer so uh stay tuned
All right, so now that the car has been, been washed, and I'm here with, with Dan at, uh, at <laughs> turn seven. So we're gonna do a little bit, before he starts polishing, we're gonna talk about this. I mean, I think it would treat me just like as if I'm, a, I'm an owner or a first time guy, that's the best way. Cause I mean, everybody else is kind of wondering what, what is the magic about all this stuff. So let's, let's talk about this. Yeah, so paint obviously is finite. There's only so much paint that you have on the car. Um, so before any polishing can be done, because polishing is essentially a liquid abrasive, it takes away clear coat, if it's a base coat, clear coat car, or if it's a single stage, you're taking away the top layer of dead skin or dead paint, oxidized paint. Um, so there's only so many times you can do it. So before any polishing can be done, you got to measure the paint to see how much you have left to work with. Right. So we're dealing with mills. This is what I Correct. usually deal with. And, it, and it's a good, you know, if everybody kind of uses the same thing. And also I look at it relative because I also have found that some of these um, paint meters, they might be different from side to side, but it's always consistency, right? If you use the same paint meter, if we go across and you take that and touch to that fender, you know, we're going to see a seven and then you go across and you see an eight. So that's, that's pretty good. I mean, like, yeah. you know, that's probably, that's an original paint or single layer of paint. Yeah, you know. So a mil or a mil and a half or two mil difference is fine. Mm -hmm. uh, when you start getting into this panel being six or seven or eight, and then you jump to another panel and it turns to twenty or nineteen, right? right. Then you know that there's something going on right. where, okay, this panel maybe have been repainted. There may have been damage. There may not have been damaged. Right. You can do a little bit more investigative work with it. Um, right. but and it what works. I deal with, a lot of times I deal with the older cars. So there's always, you know, a repaint of some sort. So you just kind of want to know whether or not the car was, you know, how many paint jobs or a filler is another issue. But on, on what you're dealing with with newer cars, mm -hmm. it's really about, you know, maybe a, a panel has been painted or, or just the scuff and spray or, you know, this guy might have had some, you know, garage damage. But that paint meter will show you very quickly double that because they just might have just you know, roughed up the paint, add another layer of paint, and yeah. that will show up from there. Exactly. Okay. And then another aspect of it is kind of managing from a detailing perspective, the client's expectations. So sometimes people can say, hey, listen, I want this car to be absolutely perfect. I don't want to see any scratches or swirls or even texture or orange peel or any of that. I want it to be glass smooth and perfect. Right. But when you bring the meter in and you start pointing it out and saying, hey, listen, these are mills. Right. This is measuring from the substrate, meaning all the way down to the metal, through the primer, through the base coat, through the clear coat. So you're essentially cutting this in three. And that's really how much paint we have to work with. Right. And for anyone who's not familiar with mills, mills is one one thousandth of an inch, which is about the thickness of a post-it. Mm -hmm. So you're working with very, very thin paint. Right. So sometimes you have to manage their expectation and say, hey, listen, I know you want absolutely perfect paint, but it either A, can't be done because you don't have enough paint, or it's not beneficial to the paint because you're going to go through so much paint to get that perfection right. that now you're jeopardizing the clear coat that's on the car or the single stage paint that's on the car, and it's gonna be so thin that maybe right now it looks amazing. Right. But in two, three years, it's gonna start oxidizing, it's gonna start failing, the clear coat's gonna start flaking off and peeling off, and you're gonna be like, what happened? It's, it, it's because you took too, too far. much of it off. How thick is the clear usually? Like, do you usually find clear? Like, I guess it also depends different from, you know, Germans and American and, and Japanese cars have different thicknesses. Correct. So that's why I always ask my clients, what car do you have? And I'm not asking that in the sense of like, oh, they got a Ferrari. I'm going to charge them more. It's more of like, I need to know what manufacturer it is mm -hmm. because I need to know the year because, you know, older Porsches versus newer Porsches, right. older Ferraris and newer Ferraris. There's a different way that the car was painted. That gives me an idea of how I'm going to approach the car from that point forward. Um, Ferraris are what are you th usually at this age? Like this is mid '90s Ferrari. So, how yeah. thick is the clear usually on these? Two, maybe three Two. mils. Okay. At most. Okay. Comparatively so, to a German car, what is what are the Germans? Germans on this same year. Yeah. Yeah. Is about the same. Okay. A little bit less actually. Okay. Um, okay. 
in my experience. At right, least, right. No, it's, it's always good to know. I mean, I wouldn't even know where to guess. So it's always good to hear a, a, a data point. I'm sure there are other people out there who might have different opinions, but it's always at least an idea of a, a starting point. Correct. You know, and what about Japanese, just for the hell of it? Japanese are very thin. Very thin. Yeah. Okay. In my experience, they 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 go very thin on the paint. Okay. I guess because they're trying to make it light. I or guess. They've or they figured out a way to make the yeah, paint look. Yeah good without having to put too much right, on but right it's just the way it is it's just yeah. the nature of it yeah, yeah. No, that's or good maybe to know there's different laws or regulations over there on how they paint the car yeah. versus in germany versus in italy right you know. and the other thing i wanted to touch on real quick because we want to get to onto this car specifically but the other thing is there's a difference also because all these cars come from the factory with orange peel yeah. so there's this whole thing and i'm not trying to say anything bad about dan and what he does i think what he does is great thank god he does it because i don't do it but the thing is, what I see a lot of my customers are doing is they're, they're just getting color, uh, paint correction and which are taking a lot of the orange peel off. Uh, you know, a lot of these cars come with orange peel. I mean, that's just the way they are. I don't know if, you know, maybe you could tell me if you think this car has ever been done. I can see a certain amount of orange peel in it. I don't know if that's what it looked like when it came from the factory. Yeah. But there are guys out there who just, that drives the nuts, whether it's because their detailer tells them that yeah. or it's because they personally just look at a car. I agree, when you see a car that has been color or, or paint corrected, it's pretty cool. I mean, mm -hmm. it's like a mirror. I mean, it's unbelievably flat. Yeah. But I also know personally that to, in order to get that, you are removing a ton of clear coat to get there. And it's dangerous. I mean, yeah. the other thing is what you guys do, you go through that clear coat, you're repainting the car. Correct. So the guy who you hire to do this type of correction it, it, you got to be really careful. Number one, have the responsibility yes. to do it right. Number two, the knowledge to, to where, what they're working with. And then number three, number three, to own up to it if they burn through. Because I've had guys burn through and then just like, oh, we, we just pretend we didn't see that. And then the guy later is like, you know, yeah. they burn through your paint. Yeah, you, you know? can't do that. You have to take the responsibility. I've done that. It, you know, every any good detailer will tell you that they have burned through paint. Right. It's the bad detailers that have, like you said, right. not owned up to it. Right. Um, when you're trying to balance that fine line of perfection versus going too far, uh, sometimes you can get in trouble. I think um, the issue as to why there's people out there that want that perfection level, where they see the cars on the rest, you know, the restored cars mm -hmm. at the concourses where the paint is absolutely glass smooth. Mm -hmm. And they say, well, I want that on my car that I right. drive every day, or I want that on my Ferrari or right. this or that. What they don't realize until somebody tells them is that usually those Ferraris or those Porsches or the whatever car it is that are restored, yep. the people who are restoring them, the painters know that those cars are going to get wet sanded and right. are going to oh, get absolutely. flattened. No, I mean, as an example, you know, that's the thing. It's like this, I have this GTC here. This was set up to know that there's a ton of clear on here Correct. because the whole plan is we're going to cut this paint. It yeah. was not done like a production car. It was done as a show car. We know that that paint had to be dead flat yes. and it's already been cut. It's already been polished. And then when I put it together, it's going to be cut again. Cut it's again. going to be polished. Yeah. So it has enough clear on it. But as a, as a production car that was basically sprayed with a robot, yeah. their production and whether it was the Japanese or trying to save paint, trust me, Ferrari is not, paint is expensive. I mean, there's probably on a retail level, I know there's a thousand dollars of paint, but even on a wholesale level, you know, it's it's probably still five hundred dollars of actual material costs at a factory of like a thousand or six hundred units a year. Yeah. Material costs are still high, so they're not going to double that cost just by putting two more layers of paint on it. No, for no reason. For no reason. For so most of the people that own the car are not going to want it glass smooth. Right. So they're not going to build it into every car that they buy. Right. So those are just things that, that are common sense but but think about it when you own one of these cars what you're about to do i get it i you know it's stunning when you see what what you know dan does and the guys in your business do uh and you see the videos and you see the instagram of of, of the the reflection and it's really great but if you own the car just think at what cost you know and again not trying to take you know you guys are busy enough doing it but i always see like just you know, just be careful as an owner what what you're paying for to to get that to that level. It's it's pretty cool, but might not last that long. Yeah, exactly. You Once know? you do the the surgery, as we call it, from the pink the pink correction, we call a surgery. It's, right. it's a one time thing. You don't yeah. really want to keep doing that. Right. Once you do that correction, 
you then have to properly maintain it yeah so yeah. that you don't yeah. reintroduce <laughs> scratches and swirls and it's like a drug it's i'm telling you, you guys are like drug dealers because what yeah. ends up happening is i hear these guys all the time they get their they get their favorite pig guy their 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 uh their detail guy they get their car unbelievable and then now they can't touch it they can't drive it because it's like it's so perfect yeah. and then they when are you going to come back and touch it up because it, it's, it's just not going to look good i can't i can't get it to look as good as you could so now they they can't now they've seen it they've seen what good it could be and then they can't live because they can't do it to that level again you know you guys are doing some secret magic that yeah. <laughs> they just can't get that's it that, you, you, right on the nose that's right that's total magic <laughs> so anyway so let's get back to this car so so what do you think you think it's been cut before or not uh it doesn't look like it's been cut okay um it may have had a light polish at okay. some point in its life um very very light polish there's a difference between compound and polish yeah yep. compound is a little more aggressive a little more heavier when yep. you say cutting that means like yep. compound essentially. right right a polish is more like a gloss enhancement like we're really not taking a lot of the paint off right we're just kind of like scrubbing our skin in the bathroom in the shower kind of thing just getting the dead skin off of the okay. car so i do think it has been polished because i have seen in a few spots mm -hmm. uh, some residual polish left over okay um which you know it, it can be wiped off no big deal but that that's indicative that somebody has put a wheel to this okay but there still is enough paint according to the paint measurement that we can definitely compound this and polish it and get it to a, a reasonable level Okay, so the plan is to, to compound. Yeah, we're All gonna right. compound, and then compounding usually has to be followed by polish. Okay. So it's a two-step co paint correction. So whenever you hear a detailer say, oh, I need to do a one-step correction or a two-step correction, it usually means two-step is a compound followed by a polish. Mm -hmm. And then after polish, then is there anything else after that on top of it? Uh, we add. can put a, a sealant, a mm -hmm. synthetic sealant, which is a polymer-based sealant, uh, which is good for like six to eight months. Mm -hmm. It's applied just like wax. Right. You put it on the car, you let it dry, you wipe it off with a towel. If you want to go a little step further, I particularly use a product called Ammo, mm -hmm. uh, Ammo NYC. Yep. Their product is an enamel-based coating. So it is not a ceramic coating or a silicon dioxide coating. It has the semi-permanence of a ceramic coating, meaning a ceramic coating, once you put that on there, it's not coming off yep. unless you compound it heavily or you wet sand it. The enamel coating can be lightly polished off, but it provides the same gloss, shine, protection, all of the good pros, you know, all the pros without the negatives. Okay, and that stuff can, because that's the thing I've always noticed is that when you do ceramic, the car has to be compounded polished yeah whatever clean clean yeah. clean then they apply the ceramic that's why it's so expensive it's the Correct. ceramic is a couple hundred dollars a bottle but it's the labor like days it could be a day two mm -hmm. a day or two easily you know of uh, uh, and when you think about on the on an hourly rate that starts to get into a four figure polish and compound and an application mm -hmm. so it we're not talking cheap we're, and we're not just talking about a wax job but i do know that putting ceramic, which everybody talks ceramic, 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 and now you can go to AutoZone and get ceramic and spray it on there, but just understand that there is a difference between, you know, what we talk about on a real level of ceramic coating as opposed to like a spray bottle with ceramic quote unquote stuff on it. And then what to apply it has to be done. Like, you know, there's no sense in applying the stuff that the car isn't clean, yep. polished, and, and as smooth as it is, because all you're doing is you're just sealing you're just sealing all the imperfections into it. It's like laying clear a clear surface on top of crap. Yeah, it's so. like it's like a, a lady putting makeup on without washing her yeah. face first. Yeah, like yeah. It's, it's you're just, just you're, yeah. you're just putting stuff on top of right. dirt, right. and now it's all sealed in there. And it's hard to show in video because what yeah. what you see is you just I mean it the car looks pretty clean right now, but there's just tons of little micro scratches. Yeah, I can that, even show you with an actual light. Yeah, so. Yeah, it's hard. Sometimes it's easier, hard just, to but see. we'll see it when when I'll look at it. You do definitely see a ton of tiny little, and then when you put it out in the sun, it really shows up. So the yeah. plan is, when Dan finishes it, it it'll definitely have a much deeper, a deeper shine, and the color will really come out of it. Especially dark cars. I mean, I you know, we joke about it. It's like I have a bunch of light color cars. I could, I you could let me loose on those, but I I know when I'm beyond what I want to do, and I and the responsibility of doing it right. Yeah. So this, that's what we're going to do. And even on lighter color cars, 
the same amount of defects are happening. Right. But it's just not. As yeah, you just don't know. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm not saying I'm exactly that. It's like you definitely have those defects on these silver cars, but your eye doesn't see them. But you will definitely see it on these on these dark cars. Yeah. You know, so they are gorgeous when they are clean and they're perfect. <laughs> yeah. But, but keeping them that way. Yeah. yeah. Personally, I probably would never buy a dark car, but that's just uh, because we work on them all the time. We're cleaning them. We probably, you probably don't own a dark car. No, so. no. <laughs> exactly. I own a silver car. <laughs> exactly. And there's a reason. All right, Dan. Great. Well, uh, we'll, we'll watch you get to work and uh, thanks for coming up. Yeah, my pleasure. Anytime. Yeah. Great. Thanks. All right. So several hours later, I've left and left Dan here to do it. Uh, but I, it looks a lot better. I mean, I think it shows up in video, but, uh, you know, so this is what you would call a two-part. So what do, what do you call this? This so is this was a two-step paint correction. Okay. This is not by any means a concourse preparation. Right. right. Uh, so there are still a bunch of defects all over the car. Right. Um, but this is more of like we don't know who on Bring a Trailer is going to buy it. Right. And what they plan on doing with the car. Right. So we basically just kind of got it to a level that's acceptable. We didn't ceramic coat it or put right. enamel coating on it because, right. again, we don't know who the next owner is and right. what they plan on doing with it. Right. Maybe he might have a detailer that wants to bring this to a, a whole nother level. Right. But, but we did seal it. I mean, yes. it's done. It's two, two, two parts because basically it's a compound polish and then we sealed it. Correct. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, and, you know, we have to also kind of preface this because what happens is, you know, Dan and I see cars that are like beyond like cleaner than you can possibly understand and i don't and i, and I don't want to disparage anybody who's seen good cars but a lot of people have not actually seen that car in person like what yeah. that looks like yeah uh, we have but then at the same time 90 percent of the world will look at a car that even is less polished than this and think it looks great yeah. until they see this and then they see this and it's like it's even another step so it's all relative so I think that this car, well, obviously, it's way better than it started. You know, I, I don't, I mean, I think, you know, with video, it's so hard to show, but yeah. in person, when this car actually kind of looked dead because it had so many little scratches in the paint that it just didn't have the deep, dark luster of that green. It's not a metallic, so it needed this reflection. So, I mean, I think later I'm going to shoot this car and put it out in the sun and, and figure out how to photograph it so it looks better, but we definitely see the the green, even just in the lighting in here, is a lot better. Yeah. Um, like Dan said, he's found a you know a couple little you know defects here and there in the paint, but that's just from the car being driven and used. And you know, it's only a three-owner car, but you know every car has history on it. You know, and and it, it doesn't really can tell the story except for what we see. But you know, I think it's just been used and and uh, but again, low mileage and you know it's a it's a pretty car I think and and it did a did a really good job. Yeah, it's a gorgeous car. Yeah. I love the color combination. Yeah, so we'll we'll uh, we'll see the next step is I'm going to photograph it and uh, I have to thank Dan for coming up again and yeah. and doing it and uh we'll we'll hopefully see him do another one someday and uh we'll we'll see you again. My pleasure anytime. Great. We've always got some fun cars up here so I love it. <laughs> Great. Thanks Dan. You got it.